What's going on everybody? So my name is Nick and for my theory it is basically split into two elements. I believe that criminal behavior stems from early childhood abuse um, and basically just neglect or any kind of like really just straight up bad parenting. Um, it develops within the child and then it blossoms in adulthood. And the second one that I think plays a major role as well, and I couldn't really decide between the two, the second one is got to be the social class um, and the suffering from the hierarchy of social stratification that happens within um, areas of low poverty, uh, people that are born within a certain means of financial stability, um, lower, close to being just out in the street, those children are more likely to adopt a criminal, criminal behavior just in order to survive where they are. There's gangs, there's drugs, there's um, other things that are influential to them and when you grow up around that a particular type of behavior and that is a reality and it's normal, then it becomes an accepted behavior by that person and that child and that will also blossom into adulthood so <clears throat> being that social class is a big one of mine um, and child abuse let's get into it um, so basically straight up for the National Institute of Justice Childhood abuse leads to adult criminal behavior by fostering antisocial behavior during childhood, which follows by harboring relationships as an adult with intimate partners who are also antisocial. And then for social class and criminal behavior, Carl Thompson stated that the class background is directly correlated with both the amount and the type of criminal offending. So we have our two perspectives that lead to criminal behavior. And I think they're very substantial. Um, really, these are the two that came out to me. I couldn't pick between the both of them. So my theory uh, from the three perspectives, it would have to be psychological, and that's for the um, abuse, and sociological for the social classes. Um, when you're dealing with child abuse, it's got lasting implications on the victim well into adulthood. Psychologists' explanation of criminal behavior stems from childhood. If a child is improperly socialized, and then they could develop disturbances in their personality, which causes them to inflict their antisocial impulses to inward or outward, um, more so outward when we're dealing with these type of individuals. And improperly socialized children uh, are most often children who are subjected to abuse as well as abuse children are likely to engage in crime early as juveniles and then into adulthood as it pertains to criminology and psychology the most fitting example definitely that stuck out to me for this psychological abuse theory is Richard Kuklinski and I think all of you know um, a little background about Richard Kuklinski his parents abused him and abused him and without mercy without saying I'm sorry without saying you know I love you you know this was for your own good so I, th I think I think um, somewhere down the line Richard Klinsky figured out that you know when people inflict pain or suffering on another person uh, it's not normal to have empathy for them which led to his sociopathic behavior uh, another big element of that was that his parents would not show love to him. So without feelings, without love, without remorse, um, that behavior blossomed uh, into a career for him. Not a career choice that any of you would rather would, would ever go into, but um, he was good at it because of those elements that he had through, throughout his childhood. If he had empathy, if he had remorse, 
he would not have done what he did for so long and been so good at it. I think people who have empathy or soft spots, or not normal people, I guess you could say, uh, would get, I don't know, too ate up about it after they killed all these people for the mafia. So that is the best example, I think, for that. Now, leading into my sociological behavior, um, my theory is supported by Robert Merton's strain theory. Merton states that crime is significantly higher among working class people due to fewer opportunities to achieve success by legal means. So basically, they have to survive. They don't have any money. So what are they going to do to get that money? They can't get a good job, so they're obviously going to break the law. So that stems to a criminal behavior. Uh, they will adopt innovative cultural responses in order to attain material success through criminal means like drug dealing or burglary. So there you go. In layman's terms, this means if a person is born into a social class which is engulfed by poverty, then they are most likely to resort to criminal activity in order to survive within their environment. Both so psychologically and sociologically speaking, my theory about what leads to criminal behavior is supported um, through abuse and through social class. So why do some people exhibit not abnormal behavior, uh, commit crimes, and other people don't? It's simple when um, I explain to you this. Um, being that children are abused are twice as likely to become criminals as children who are not abused. The notion that an unbiased children are more likely to not be criminal. Uh, sorry, unabused children are more likely not to be criminals. And social classes with higher bracket consist of people who are not worried about money. Their drive, the driving force behind the theory of criminals in social class derives from people who are in a social class that forces them to commit crime in order to survive. Rich people don't need to commit crime in order to survive. They commit crime because they can't control their greed. Which leads me into my next thing. People have impulses. Um, everybody, everybody has impulses. If we have impulses to, I don't know, go out and party, go out and, you know, we have impulses to get angry uh, at things. We have impulses to do bad things sometimes. What separates these people, the, these criminals, from average people? is the average person psychologically can handle these impulses and suppress them and say no I'm not gonna do that I can handle what it's what's going what's going on it's the people that are criminals that are unable to obtain control over their impulses that leads them to their criminal behavior their criminal action so I guess that's another like another element to the psychological aspect of why people commit crime, um, and that can be related as well to your abusive, abusive child, um, because their impulse to hurt someone and not feel remorse will drive them to, you know, they can't control their impulse because of their past. They all those memories come back and it haunts them, and they're most likely want to inflict the same pain that their parents inflicted on you. So that's an impulse that they can't control. An impulse that a social, uh, sociologically speaking, people can't control is the impulse to survive. Um, when, like I said, with rich people, their impulses to survive, they can control because they have the money. People of lower class, they can't control their impulses to survive because if they're hungry, they're gonna do what they can to eat. They're going to do what they can to pay that electricity bill. They're going to do what they can to, and if it's a drug thing, they're going to do whatever they can to uh, get that money to obtain those drugs. So also a, a gang, they're going to do whatever they can to impress their gang. Impulses go over the top of what people who don't commit crime will regularly do. So to wrap up, child abuse, so psychologically, as well as the impulses that overcome someone leads to criminal behavior and what would be a, uh, another aspect of that in my theory is if you're born into poverty 
if your social class is on the low spectrum of uh, social stratification, it breeds the behavior in order to survive. You're going to commit these crimes because it's the environment that you grew up in and you're a product of that environment. So thank you for your time. Um, have a good day.